my dog is going to go ape shit. Okay. Okay. I want to code my i3. Does Eco Belkin have a video out? Take 45. Here on YouTube, when you search for how to code an i3, you're going to stumble across lots of videos. But most of them are going to be, hey, this simple trick unlocks range for the i3. Hey, how to unlock range for the i3. And it's like, okay, they're okay. They always leave a step here or there out. And none of them actually show you the full process of what they're doing. I am going to show the full process of setting up and coding the i3, as well as restoring what you just coded and backing up your files so that you can restore them at a later date. <sighs> Before I get into the coding aspect, I'm going to go over a few housekeeping notes. I would recommend when you're coding to have a separate device that you're coding with. That way that device can be completely air gapped and free from any kind of instructions or interference, people calling you, texting, whatever it may be. And make sure that device has a fully charged battery. Because the last thing that you want to do is to brick one of these body modules. This is a BMW. Break my windows and massively inflate the price for repairs and for parts. I mean, come on. Changing the 12 volt battery at the dealership is like 400 bucks. You want to be cognizant of what you're doing. The app that I'm using is Beamer Code, and I'm using it on an S10 Plus. The adapter that I'm using is in my pocket, is a VPeak Bluetooth adapter. Beamer Code was $44, I do believe, off the App Store. And I'm not going to get into expert mode of Beamer Code. I'm only going to stick with like the easy to use interface of beaver code. Now with housekeeping out of the way, let's get to coding. What is my battery percentage at by the way? I'm at 58%. We're gonna plug this in just so that I have a decent charge. We're also going to put this in airplane mode. Like so. And I'm gonna turn Bluetooth on. And then I'm only gonna connect to the adapter. So the adapter is going to go in the OBD2 port, like so. We're gonna put the car in accessory mode. Okay, we have the Bluetooth adapter in. We are in accessory mode. We're going to load Beamer code. We're gonna hit connect. And it's going to say connect to the adapter, which then is going to say Hey, what car do you have? We have an i3, and we're going to connect. And then this is going to take a little bit of time. It's going to read and identify all the ECUs or body modules that you have in the vehicle. This is also a place where you probably want to make sure you have no interruptions, hence why you want your device to be air-gapped. So I'm going to let this read and we'll come back. And here we are. All the modules that I have in the i3. This is the easy version. You can click a module and it'll read and then it'll give you the option to go to expert mode. We're not doing expert mode. We're only doing the easy mode. So the first thing that I'm going to look for is I'm going to enable the full fuel tank capacity for my i3. Now this option is only available for 2016 and older i3s, and I believe only ones that were sold in America. 
So to do that, we have to go to the instrument cluster. It's going to read the data. Each time the app reads a module, it creates a backup of that module. Later in the video, I will show you how to read those backups, export them off your device so that you can have them safely stored somewhere else in case you switch your phone or whatever device you're using to a newer one. As you see, it has read that module. And here at the top, it will say expert mode. That's not where we want to be. We want the increase electronically limited fuel capacity. We're going to click that. And we're going to click active. And then we're going to hit save. And then at the bottom right, it says code. We're going to hit code. And then Beamer code is going to say this important thing. Make sure you're in airplane mode and you have no other interferences. Because this is the moment where you could really screw up your body module and have pain hitting your wallet. We're going to start coding. And this is going to take a minute or so. We'll come back when this is done. Oh, that was easy. Oh, and I see instrument panel malfunction. And then it's going to ding at me, restart, and then it says clearing the errors. And then it says coding's completed. Interesting. I wonder why it says update required consult the nearest service center. We'll figure that out later. Okay. That was easy. Then we hit the back arrow. And the next option I'm going to change is the range extender to hold state of charge for the car. To undo the fuel tank coating that we just did, you would have to revert to a backup, which that is, will be explained later in the video. Now we do a range extender. So that we do head unit. Again, it has to read the data. And then we scroll down to look for, oh, there's your AM radio if you want to activate AM radio. Range extender menu. We're going to click that, click active, click save, and click code, and start coding. Now it tells me coding is complete. And then in iDrive, as you can see, we have the range extender option. Now this option can hold state of charge when the battery is 75% state of charge or less. We go back into our Beamer code. And that's all I was going to really do for coding. There's a few other things that we can do. Um, and if you want to disable your seatbelt reminders, because the BMW gong is so god awful, we're going to go into the advanced crash safety module. We're going to read this entire module. Okay, we're at 100%, we're in the module. 
Now I have a six month old 90 pound St. Bernard and he's always sitting here in the passenger seat. So I previously to teach myself how to use Beamer code, I already deactivated the passenger seat reminder. I left the driver's seat indicator active though. But I think what I'm going to do is deactivate the driver's seat too because I do DoorDash delivery on the side and I'm in and out of the car all the time. As such, I'm only going short distances and sometimes I don't put my seatbelt on to go one or two blocks down the road. And having that damn gong go off is really annoying. But this is my personal preference. So like we did the other ones, we just hit active, or we hit not active, we hit save, and then we hit code, and then we start coding. And when you do a seatbelt version, or not a version, but when you do a seatbelt module, it's gonna come up with this chassis stabilization error. Um, when it restarts the ECU, it will clear that error for you. And it's done. I suppose I probably could have changed the duration. That says 100 seconds. There ain't no way in hell it's 100 seconds. It's like two or three minutes. Uh, other options that we can go through. Um, right now in northern part of Ohio where I live, it's cold outside. We can change the default drive mode to Eco Pro so that I get slightly more range out of my cold battery pack if I cared enough. Um, so we have to go to the body domain controller. Oh, this is probably gonna be a big module. This might be a minute for us to read it too. Okay, we're at 100%. Now we're in the body module. Here you can change like your angel eyes, your low and high beam, or your low beam parking brightness. Um, your shut off your eye drive when the door is opened. That can be kind of annoying. Not too sure. Uh, let's see, we're looking for drive mode. Daytime running lights. Inner part and outer part. That looks intriguing. Unlock doors automatically. I can't stand the hatch that locks automatically. Like you hit the button to unlock, the, to pop the hatch open. You put your groceries or something in and then you turn around and you want something back out. You have to re-pop open the hatch. It's like, can you, well, I already unlocked it once. Anyway, oh, here we are, driving mode. Default driving mode is in comfort. You could read this and change it to Eco Pro or Eco Pro Plus if you prefer. Uh, other useful things that you can do within Beamer code is you can change, like you saw earlier, enable AM radio. For those of you that listen to AM radio, you can go into, I think, the body module we was just in. For the heated seats, you can change the temperature of the heated seats for each level, one, two, and three. Uh, air conditioning, right here, you can change the last sitting that was used when the car was on, if that fits your fancy. And I think there's an option here, maybe under the head unit, if you upgrade the display from the standard display that I have to the bigger full screen display, you're gonna have to go in and change the resolution of that screen. Now, we, I coded all that I wanted to code. Oh, I, the fuel tank just hit in. It went from 21 miles to 43 miles. Interesting. Speaking of that fuel, what was that body module under? It was under the head unit. Oh, damn. We gotta reread this again. So if you do do a coding and you want to revert to it, well, how do you do that? Well, when this loads, we're gonna do that. Once you're in the module that you want to do, in the top right corner, you have the arrow the little back arrow, you click the back arrow, 
and it says recovery. Do you want to recover the original coding data for this control unit? Yes or no? And that's how you restore a previous module. Now, how do you access those files that are on your phone or whatever device you're using? Well, you have to leave the app on the phone. So I'm going to disconnect. Right here on the main screen, you hit these three lines in the top right corner, and then you click export backups. And then from there, you have options to send them wherever you want to send them. Um, another option is to connect your device to a PC. And then right here is the file path to access the folder. And then from there, you can drag and drop the files off of the phone and onto your backup storage medium that you choose. Just make sure that when you want to restore, you put those files back on your device that you're using the code. Also, I would not change the names of those files because Beamer code has a specific name set for each file. And if you go changing that, it may not read that file, which then kind of renders your backup useless. With all that done, I coded my i3. That seems pretty simple. Let me know in the comments what options you want to code in your i3. Or what do you use Beamer code for outside of an i3? I've seen people use it, as you saw in the um, title screen. It works for other BMW models as well. Let me know. If you liked it, or this video, we hit that button. But if you didn't, you know what to do. I am Eco Balkan. I will see you guys in the next video.